Good morning. Well, as promised, like I said, I will do a day in the life of Dan. It is seven o'clock in the morning. I've just uh, been asleep for about six hours now. I've just been woken up because the AMP, the police, are meant to be manning the back gate. But they've fallen asleep because they've been smoking marijuana. So we're doubling up the stags and the duties, so I've got to go on duty two hours earlier than I thought I was. So it's time to get up, so I'll get up now and do an hour's duty. So this is me in my mozzie net, here in my tent, which is up top. And I'm going to get changed now, and then I'm on duty in five minutes' time. And that's, that's the start of Dan's day. Well, look, that's unusual. The Afghan police are up and awake. This is the washing area. So we can sit on this. Much better. Right, first things first before breakfast is I need a wee. And I just want to show you where our toilet is, well, for a wee anyway. There are these things called desert roses, and they're dug down into the ground so your wee goes off the ground. And if only the camera could show how much that smelt. And now I think some breakfast and some weapon cleaning to be done. My new hammock. Okay, we'll set up for breakfast then. That's lit then. That goes on. My rations. Today it is sausage and beans. So put that in there. Toast is ready. We have breakfast. And it's only 8.30, and it's hot. Speak to you later. Mm. Mm. Maybe five minutes. Mm. Okay, breakfast is done. I'll clean my rifle. Take a bit of time so I won't record the whole thing. That's my arm rifle nice and clean now. Okay, change of plan. I'm now back in the normal sanger. This is it. Morning. Hello. Big Chris. Hello. 
Ah, how's it going, Tap? <laughs> so you just finished double manning now, have you? Yeah, we just collected that. So. <laughs> okay, cool. Got to get some footage of us doing normal stuff. If you get it now, the contact and that just got smashed. <laughs> <laughs> it might do. <laughs> Everything all right? Yeah. Yeah, all quiet. The western front. <laughs> the western front, east front. Yeah, that's a good one. Good camera. Yeah. Just you and me. <laughs> I'll show you my view now. This is it. Looking out to the east. Just GPMG machine gun. A pair of binoculars. A board showing where all our claymores are. And this is our clack of setting the claymores off if we get too close. Maps, night sights, radio, we'll do a radio check now. A Boron Zero Balaclava radio check, over. Zero, okay, over. A Balaclava, okay, out. That's the other GPMG looking out to the sort of southeast. And then just tons and tons of ammunition. That's better. A little bit hazy this morning. Now is not too bad. Normally, when you get on duty, you can do about 20 minutes when you really concentrate. You look through the barn, binoculars like this. But it seems to go quite quickly. You like that for 20 minutes, and then you look at your watch and think, oh, I've still got 40 minutes to go. And that's when you start thinking about how good R&R &R was, what you did on R&R, &R, the fact that there's only 17 days until we might move into the house. Think about Lou, you'll be fast asleep now. Doesn't feel too bad being back actually. Done, uh, been back four days. The first two days were just miserable. Just firstly flying back, you just feel like cattle just being herded through. But then when I got back, Bastion was a bit boring. But then I got, as soon as I got my rifle and my kit out, Sort of had a purpose again, it wasn't too bad. Then flew down here and then everything was just back to normal. Then just felt like I hadn't been away. So I've sort of decided I'm not going to clock watch for the next two months. I'm just going to sort of get on with it and forget about everything as much as I can at home. Make the two months go quickly and then I can look forward to the last three weeks, four weeks. And that should go pretty quickly. And then I'll be back home. Alright. I'll save some of it now. See you later. Oh, in jail! Camera doesn't lie, lads. I was awake until 8 o'clock. No one was awake. Only because I took you off stag. <laughs> oh, I, I knew you were videoing it as well. As soon as I could hear it was... Wankers. Right, guys. When I was back in UK, my sister asked me what we talk about when we sat around for ages. And I said, anything and everything. And I said sometimes we ask like hypothetical questions. So my hypothetical question now, going around from the left, starting with Wardy, is if you were a girl, what would you be called? What would your name be? Lucy. Cool, it's got to be quick. Why Lucy? Do you like it? Yeah. Okay. Chris. You'd be called Chris if it was a girl? Yeah. Christine. Christine. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'd be called Gwyneth. Well, that's just embarrassing. That's, that's embarrassing. Stace, come on, have a good one. Well, Sam, Samantha. Why Samantha? <laughs> Actually, I used to know like quite a big chubby girl called Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, John, what would you? Bitch. Bitch? Yeah. Bitch. That would, Actually, that's quite true. Actually. Ashley, why Ashley? Did you like it? Yeah, yeah Gemma. Gemma, why Gemma? I don't know, I just like it. Huh? Yeah, because I like their name. Do you like the Gemma? I think. I think I'd be a Beth. Beth? Yeah. Why Beth? 
I don't know, just came into my head. <laughs> Any changes? Anyone? It's a Lucy. You still happy with Lucy? No, I'm happy with Lucy. Twigsy, what would you be called? If you were a girl. Huh? Oh, Abby brought this, what's new like that? <laughs> Abby, yeah, okay. Cool. Oh, God, it's loud. Fucking shit! Right, right, you can guess by my rubbish cam camera work both of them. is that we're now in contact. Right, three rounds on Kylie and three Hang rounds on Orange coming up. in. Shut up! Yeah. Like, what? No, I don't want him to touch that fucking mortar. He's fucking dog shit. Don't touch it. Who is it? Cotton you, man. Right, round's complete. That round's complete, is it? Yeah. How many rounds was that? Uh, three rounds on each. We should get six on Kylie. In 15 seconds, uh, both locations. Oh, fucking shut up. Balakar, Roger, observing. Out. Yeah, we're right, Jenny. Shot up uh, Balakar. Uh, I'm just trying to think what you can shoot with all uh, direct weapons. Uh, we're just trying to fix the GPG. Come boy. Sweet. Are you all right? As you say, you've checked fire. Yeah. Oh. Fucking do it! Come on, Stace, give it to him! 5-6. 5-6, right, right, right. Yeah, I, the only way I can sort of describe my my hearing is being in a, a sort of social environment in a pub or a restaurant. Um, if I'm not sat in the right place, like a corner of a room or anything like that, and there's noise all around me, it's the background noise that really affects it. And the second there's background noise, I just can't hear the conversation that I'm having, and all I hear is the louder background noise. It feels like I've got two biscuit tins on my ears, and it's just sort of reverberating back into me, and there's like a sort of high ring ting to everything I say. The louder the noise, the worse that gets. To the point sometimes, uh, conversation in a busy pub, I'd probably be able to hear about one in eight words, so I'm just having to pick up on conversations, which is... Do you remember the moment that sparked that off? Yeah. Oh, two, in two, two very distinctive incidents, yeah. I mean, one of them was... Uh, yeah on a checkpoint, so like the front line where we were in Garmacia and firing, um, we, we, an RPG had been fired into our position, there's only 12 of us on the front line in a, in a sort of entrenched front system. Boss. Andy, the lad said that the RPG came from the front here. Fuck it, should Brittany go. I tell you, no fucking could have got that better. The lad said it came better. from this way. The sentry believed that the, the enemy were behind a wall. So from, I climbed up onto the top of the roof and quite an enclosed place, I fired a, an AT-4, which is a, a shoulder-launched uh, rocket system. I mean, I didn't have any ear defence on because we were in contact, and I just remember that, that noise. I just remember it just sort of being such a shattering noise. What? What? My weapon. <laughs> right. Okay, firing one. Brownie, tell us when you're firing! As soon as he's fired, I'm going to this. seriously Andy. ringing. Why are we here? So I've got to go in for my tribunal now, so I've got to meet my um, British Legion representative, who's uh, my lawyer, and then I've also got a family friend, uh, Wendy, who's a barrister, who's just coming out of interest, and just to hear from an objective point of view, um, you know, how it's all going to go today. But I, I said right from the start of the process, like two years ago, that when I first wrote to them, that this has got to be seen through, otherwise, if every soldier just accepted the, the sort of the payout of compensation that they're going to get, which is pretty measly in my opinion, um, then you know we're never going to sort of get forward and, and, and make the you know the, the, the powers that be realise that the implications of committing soldiers further down the line, there are implications down, down the road in terms of hearing. Uh, I mean, mine mine's fairly minor. We talk about hearing, but. What about life-changing um, injuries to soldiers that have got sort of legs missing, arms missing, or huge psychological problems? You know, they're having to contend with the same system as myself, and so if I don't do it, you know, who will be doing it? Because I think too many people in the army, we've always worked on a fairly goodwill basis, and I think a lot of soldiers have the same mentality, which is just, well, I'll make it work and I'll get through it, and I'll accept what's what's sort of been given to me. And this is this is an opportunity that the 
the, uh, the Veterans Agency are giving for us to be heard. So uh, I'm sort of exercising that and we'll see how it goes. These are one but two. Just come in off the ambush. Hummers, how was the ambush? Was it? Yeah, I know. How close were they? About 200, 250 metres or so. Cool, were they really clear that you could see them all? Yeah, you could see them quite easily. One on top of the uh, the reef and one just to the left of it when the mortar started coming in. The one on top of the reef got very frightened and ran away. Cool, that's what I like. Waggy, controlling the mortars. <laughs> that's so normal. What's just happened? Tell us what happened. Well, uh, I was up by a father. And I was like, with the lads, and the old comm message come through. Yeah. So I went to the bottom of the sanger to see what the old comm message was. By the time I got to the bottom of the sanger, I was thinking at RPG, I was thinking at the side of the wall. And then, uh, all strapped on and that went in the side of me. Yeah. And then I just got, got in cover and then got treated by. Did you cry? No, I'm silly, sir. Baby. <laughs> silly. <laughs> Bit shook up at first. It's good. Our first, our first casualty in the company. And he said that he's buying everyone a crate for being the first. <laughs> cool. I get to live up in the tree house. Up here, so I've got my bed and all my kit on the wall here ready to be crushed out if I need it. Helmet, body armour, rifle, 84 rocket launcher kit. Music, of course, is essential. Right, and if you're a bit careful through here, this is, um, this is uh, me and Stace occupying contact. You might have seen it from the other footage you've got. We had to keep pretty low here. Stace, yeah. what's going on? Massive contact. 81's coming down on three foxes. We've got the GMG machine gun, which is a grenade launcher. Okay! We fired javelin from here. Okay, they're still firing at us, okay? Come on. Let's go! Come when you're firing. Firing javelin in a minute. You ready? One minute, boss, I need to eat sauce. Come on. You lay one barrel onto the southeast corner of Orient. You ready? Are we going, Stacey? Are we? What, what stage are you at? Are you on tracker? Yeah. You got locked on? Locked! Okay, fire firing! When you fire on <laughs> Good hit! About four weeks ago, one of the guardsmen was killed up here. A bullet bounced off the weapon and went straight into his head and killed him. Fucking hell, that Fuck. was aimed at me. That, that was, was, that's close. That was it. So unless you need to be above the parapet here, you stay pretty low. That was Mr. Hinkman, nearly. What? Try and lob this fucker in. Short. Sweet boss. Short. What? Add 100. Okay. Add 150. Add 150, boss. Who was that? Hey! Suck it! Suck it! Suck! Suck it! Billy! Billy! Fuck it. Oh, it's a good shot. Spot on. How'd you feel right now, sir? Fucking cool. Didn't like when I stood up there and got some, though. 
Come look close. You gonna give us a guided tour then, Zach? Yeah. What we got? <laughs> we starting off with a six pack or the bicep, sir? I don't want a guided tour of your body, I want a guided tour of the gym. Right, I'll give you an example. Okay, give us an exercise. Right, starting it. This, we're working our triceps, right? Right, so all the way down and up. Next, we've got the pull up spot. Yeah. Right, like so. We can use it for our triceps as well by putting this over and yeah. pulling it down like so. Yeah, and so yeah. What, what's that made of? Just rope and a rock. Rope and, and ammo tins. And an ammo tin, like it. Got the bench press on here. Yeah. Right, we've also got another one you can do bench press, but you can also lie down and use do flies. And they're and just three foot, three foot pickets. Yeah, put together. Yeah, okay. Right. Like Rocky stunt bubble. You ready, sir? Yeah. You ready for this? It's quick. Cool. Foot biceps and stuff like that. Good. And that's about it. Lots of blokes do press ups and stuff. Cool, say goodbye then. Just so I've got lumps growing on my body. I think they're called a six pack. This is a giant helium balloon that we're going to send up with a camera attached to it about 60 feet in the air and it films all the enemy, what they're doing. I give it about three days before it gets shot down. It's still... What are you trying to say? Trying to see like I've got out. And there's Twigs using my AK-47 that I've just been given by Mir Hamza, the chief of police. So we're gonna take it down on the range. Have a go on that in a minute. Pretty cool. <laughs> you expect blows to fuck around. Here we are. What are you trying to say like that? I've got out. <laughs> <laughs> no why? Why are we doing it? Because we're hungry. <laughs> we just paid for six chickens off the uh, police. We paid three pounds for each of them, so they, they've gone off laughing with plenty of money. That's the first lucky one. And the other manking chickens. And poor things are down here. But it's the first time that we've eaten chicken in two and a half months. So we don't really care what they look like, and it's going to be good food. Go on then. You ready? Don't let go of us! What's the kit? I don't want any blood! Put it down, what's the kit? Let's get some stones. Keep it off the mud as well. It's disgusting. Keep hold of it. Ah. Got splattered, don't. Can you go pass off? Don't flee. So you're fucking eating him in a minute. I've got blood over me. I'm going to take the shower for a sack. The Bear Grylls. Hi, I'm Ray Miz, and I'm a survival expert. What you can see done now. Is I'm going to insert my whole hand inside the chicken's jap side. Things I'm going to be looking forward to pull out is jelly eggs, full hard shell eggs, guts, and etc. Watch in for so. Did you hear that funny part? Give me a knife, someone. No, we are going to have this shit, so I tell you. <coughs> Get in there. Alright, well, that's enough footage, I'm stopping filming. That's so missing it. There's an egg in here. Hey, it's a fucking egg. Study with the fucking merchandise, mate. Be careful. It's only a delicate chicken. You're ripping it all apart. It's not an egg. Three, it's two, two, two one. It's not an egg. Is it? It's his fucking kidney. It's his heart, I think. Yeah. No, it's his kidney. You can eat that, Bobby does. I'll tell you, mate. And here's Keats with the end result. Not quite the end result. Nando's on J Tack Hill first. There it is. Look at that. How many rounds are fine? Fucking hell. What? That you is emotional. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Is it? <coughs> three, I think. Wanna go close, boys? Oh no, fight for fate. Here we go. Ready! Another one ready. Another one! Fire! <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Whoa. Ready for it, bud? That just made my hair move. That was so big. The problem with this is it's good fun, but it just keeps you awake. And I'm on sentry in about an hour's time. Oh, I feel like it gets the air coming. See you in a bit.